And we're going to read it together. This is my Bible, God's holy word. I am what it says I am. I can do what it says I can do. I am a winner and not a loser. I am filled with a purpose, destined for greatness, created by God to impact the world for Jesus Christ. Amen. 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 You may be seated in the presence of the Lord today. Thank you. Amen. God is good. All the time. All the time. God is good. Amen. And his goodness yes. is not based on our circumstances. Yes. It's just because who he is. Yes. Who he is. Amen. And we serve a good God. We yes. serve a God that's yes. sovereign. Yes. yes, yes. Amen. Amen. So we've been talking about self-awareness. Are you aware of how you conduct yourself? Are you aware of of the words that you're releasing into the atmosphere. Are you aware of how you tend to think? But today I want to ask you, are you God aware? Amen. Are you God aware? Amen. Because we tell God we want to experience his presence, but yet we come into the house of the Lord and our mind is in a different place. It's somewhere else is thinking about What's going to happen after service, or what did that sister wear today, or why does that brother look at me like that? Whatever the case may be, we are not God aware. And in our women's fellowship, we are studying the life of David. And when David became king of Israel, David had a sole purpose. He was like, it's time to bring the ark back to Jerusalem. Because in the Old Testament, the ark carried the very presence of God. Amen. Amen. Now, we're in modern days, so we don't need a chest. Even though we have a chest in the back for our gifts that we gave to the Lord in December as a remembrance for us to remember to do those things we committed to doing. Amen. But we, don't, we no longer need an ark to sit here for the presence of God because we are now the modern tabernacle right. of the Holy Spirit, of God's presence. Let's look at 1 Corinthians chapter 6. We're going to look at verses 19 and 20. So David was like, before we can do anything else, before any other kingdom work can be done, we need to bring the, the ark back. And for the modern day church, for us today, we need God's presence. Amen. And what hinders God's presence is the attitudes that we bring with us. If you come into church just to get something, you're coming with the wrong motivation. Because when we come into the house of the Lord, is to bring God some. God, I want to bring you my best praise. God, I want to bring you my best worship. Because I may not have been doing it like I should have during the course of the week, but God, I've set this time aside. And sometimes this is the only time that some of us set aside to spend time in the presence of God. But yet we want God to be there for our every cry. And he is. But God is saying, now I'm calling, I'm, I'm calling you to a higher level than me. So it just can't be on Sunday mornings or mm -hmm. Wednesday night Bible study or whatever night your Bible study is. God says, I want you carry my presence. Mm -hmm. Let's look at 1 mm -hmm. Corinthians chapter 6, verses 19 and 20. And I'm going to be reading the New Living Translation. And it says, don't you realize that your body is the temple of the Holy Spirit who lives in you and was given to you by God. You do not belong to yourself, for God bought you with a high price. So you must honor God with your body. So that's what the word is saying. Don't you realize that your body is the temple of the Holy Spirit? Amen. So you have to be careful where you're taking your temple. Your temple can't just go in any old place. Amen? Because we want to live a life that's holy and righteous and pleasing to the Lord, so we need to evaluate the activities that we participate in. Amen. And then the Word of God says that God bought us with a high price. God sent His Son into the world to die for us. Amen. He took a beating that we deserve. Yes. He bled blood that we should have been bleeding. Yeah. Because of our behavior, because of our actions and our attitudes. So now we have to say, are we truly God aware as we're navigating life? Amen. Or are we marching to the beat of the world's rhythm? Or are we marching to God's rhythm? Amen? Amen. 
So we have to ask that of ourselves. We no longer need a physical ark. We are the ark. Because the Holy Spirit lives within us. Amen? Amen. Let's look at Colossians chapter 3. And I'm going to be reading verses 10 through 17. Because we say that we've given our lives to Christ. So if we've given our lives to Christ, our our behavior and our relationship should reflect our new life in Christ. Now if you say that you don't belong to the Lord, then nothing you do should surprise us. Because you don't belong to the Lord. You have not accepted him as your Lord and Savior. Mm -hmm. So it should not surprise us the way the world acts. Amen. But what we have a problem with is those that say that they love God right. and their actions are saying something totally different. Yeah. Their behavior is saying something totally different. Right. Amen? Amen? So let's look at Colossians chapter 3, verse 10. It says, put on your new nature. Amen. Every day, put on your new nature. Every day we are faced with making choices. We choose how we respond to the actions that are done to us. You have a choice every day. Am I going to let this irritate me or am I going to be at peace? Am I going to let this be a distraction or am I going to keep my focus on God? Every day you have a choice. Yes, the enemy knows those things that he can push those buttons, but we do not have to respond, not the way he expects us to. So that when those buttons are responded, push Thank you, Lord Jesus, because your grace is sufficient. Amen. Thank you, Lord Jesus, because I know that you're right here with me, that you never leave me, nor do you forsake me. Amen. We've got to learn to fight this battle with the word of God. Amen. It cannot be fought in our flesh. That's right. And I am the first one to stand up here transparent and say, these past two weeks, my attitude has been off the charts. <laughs> off the charts. Somebody say something to me, and I'm like, and you know, the thing about it is that Pastor Mella, she gave me this 10-day word fast. We did this Bible plan. And it's not the things that we're saying verbally. It's this, these internal conversations. Mm -hmm. And I've had some serious Amen. internal Amen. conversations. Amen. 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 And then go ahead and show me that. So I'm the first one to say, every day, Pastor Mary, I need to put on this new nature. To put on a new man because I am I have ex, I have accepted Jesus as my Lord and Savior. Amen. But I have allowed the distractions of the world to change my attitude. Jesus. And now God is saying, "You got this time for course correction. Amen. Amen. It's time to get it back on track mm -hmm. and be mindful of those internal conversations that you, that no one else can hear, but God says I hear them. Right. Amen. And if we're aware that God hears it, it should change our behavior. Amen. If we are God aware, it should change the way that we're conducting ourselves. Yeah. Amen. Amen? So the word says, put on your new nature and be renewed as you learn to know your creator and become like him. Satan did not create us. That's right. God is the creator of man. He says he formed us in his image. Now sometimes we act like children of Satan. <laughs> But God says that you belong to me. Amen. And because you have accepted me as your Lord and Savior, it's time for your behavior to change. Amen. It's time for your attitude to change. It's time for your thinking to change. Amen. Are you God aware? If God was to look at the real in your heart and in your mind, would he be pleased with what he's seeing? Even while you're sitting here in church, where is your mind at? What are you thinking about? Amen. Are you focused on God? And sometimes we have to learn to put everything else to the side. God, this is your time, and I need to focus on you. Nothing else matters but you. And we need to get to that place that God is at the forefront of everything. He says, seek ye first uh -huh. the kingdom of God and its righteousness, and all these other things will be added unto you. Amen. But God must be first. Amen. Amen? And then it says, in this new life, it doesn't matter if you are a Jew or a Gentile, circumcised or uncircumcised, barbaric, uncivilized, slave or free. Christ is all that matters, Amen. and he lives Amen. in all of yeah. us. Amen. Amen. Christ is all that matters. Amen. People may say, how can you believe that this is the word of God? 
Because it is the word of God, and the word of God is true. Amen. Well, how can you believe that everything in the Bible is true? Because it's the word of God, and the Bible is true. That's it, that's it, Pastor. And if you find one verse that you can apply to your life, that's all that matters. That's enough for me to stand on. That God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son. Amen. That we may have the right to eternal life. That's what the word says. That God so loved the world. That when I was in my sin, God so loved the world. He did not leave me in the state that I was in. God loved the world so much that he sent his son to die for us. That's all the truth I need. Amen. I don't need to prove anything. God's word will stand for itself. Amen. All these different religions want to debate the word of God. What does the word of God say? Amen. Because you're standing here proves that the word of God is true. Amen. Because you know what you were involved in. You know the lifestyle That's that you right. live. You know the bullets that die, that you Woo! die. And God Jeez. kept you. Thank you. Hallelujah. So yes. we're not going to debate the word of God. Amen. Amen. The word of God is true. Right, Amen. True. Amen. And it says that since God chose you to be the holy people he loves, you must clothe yourselves with tenderhearted mercy, kindness, humility, gentleness, and patience. Make allowance for each other's faults and forgive anyone who offends you. Amen. Remember, the Lord forgave you, so you must forgive others. That's right. Oh. Must. That's right. The Lord forgave me, so I have to forgive others. Amen. There's no debate. It's not a choice. This is what must happen. Because this is what the Word of God has said. And how can I be aware of God and his goodness and not offer forgiveness. Mm -hmm. How can I do that? How can I be God aware walking around with bitterness and resentment growing in my heart? I've got to, I choose to forgive Amen. on a daily basis. Amen. I choose to forgive. Yes, Lord. And for me, I have to ask God forgiveness and I have to learn to forgive yeah. myself. Right, right. I have to learn to forgive myself because I'm saying that this is the word of God. God said if I, can, if I confess my sins that he is faithful and just to forgive me and to cleanse me from all unrighteousness. So no matter how the enemy tries to make me feel, what does the word say? The word says that he cleanses me from all unrighteousness if I confess my sins. Amen. And that's the beginning and the end of it. Because our salvation is not based on our feelings. Amen. Because it was based on our feelings, some of us would not be here today. That's right. Amen. Because we'll be like, it's rainy, it's cloudy, it's a good day to be in the bed, read a book, just chill out, relax before starting the work week. But because Come on. you have a heart right. and a love yeah. for God, right. you yeah. press beyond right. the weather, Amen. you press beyond how you're Amen. feeling, that yeah. whatever it takes, I've got to yeah. make it into the house yeah. of the Lord. Yeah. Yeah. You can come in here weighted yeah. down, but you come in here and you experience God's presence. Yeah. But you cannot experience God's presence if you're not aware of Him. Amen. 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 That's right. If you're not aware of him, you cannot experience God's presence. You're not tuned in. You are not aware. You cannot experience God's presence if you're not tuned in. Amen. 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 So it says, forgive because he forgave us. And it says, above all, clothe yourselves with love, which binds us all together in perfect harmony. Love covers a multitude of sins. Love covers when you borrow my shoes and you do not turn them back, return them. Uh -huh. Or when I lend you a book and you uh -huh. never give it back to me. Uh -huh. Love covers a multitude of uh -huh. sins. Love covered our sin. Yes. Amen. So God is saying, I need you to extend this love to others. And we don't always, our flesh does not want us to do that. Come on. But what does God command us to what do? He commands us to love. Amen? Amen. So our relationships should reflect our new life in Christ. Let's look at John chapter 15, verse 12. Because how can we say that we love Jesus if we don't love our brother or sister? How can we say that we love Jesus but we don't love others? You're still holding it against that cop that gave you a ticket. <laughs> Well, you know you broke the law. You, you broke the speed limit. When we feel as though we've been unjustly persecuted, we hold those things against that person that's causing us that agitation. But God is saying in his word, this is my commandment, that you love one another 
as I have loved you. And the only way that you can love as God loves is to allow the Holy Spirit free reign. Because it does not come easy. Dealing with people is not easy. Not at all. But by the grace of God, uh -huh. by the grace of God. and yes. by the power of the Holy yes. Spirit, yes. we can it. love people. That's how we have to do it. Yes. Amen. 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 When we go into the workplace, it's right. Lord God is your grace and your mercy Hallelujah. and your favor and the power of the Holy Spirit yes. that enables me to love people. Yes. Amen. Yes. To love people that like to complain uh -huh. and gossip and murmur right. and just, just be unruly. Mm. But we should not be acting like that. Amen. All right. If we say that we're children of God, if we say that God has called us out of darkness into his marvelous light, then there should be a change. There should be a change that people see in us that we don't act and we don't take care of our problems uh -huh. the way the world That's does. Right. Amen? That's right. And when you truly embrace the gospel, when you truly embrace the gospel, you want to apply it to your right. daily life. Right. You want to. That's true. Because the Holy Spirit is there and it, 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 he corrects us and shows us and points us in the right direction. And I know we've been reading this verse um, multiple times, but let's turn to James chapter 1. I'm going to read verses 19 through 27. But you have to ask yourself, am I aware of God daily? And my prayer is, Lord God, let us be more aware of your presence every day. Every day. Amen. James chapter 1, verse 19. And I'm reading from the New Living Translation. It says, understand this, my dear brothers and sisters. You must all be quick to listen, slow to speak, and slow to get angry. Because some of us act like we have one ear and two mouths. Right. But right. God says, I gave you two ears uh -huh. to listen, uh -huh. to pay attention right. to what is being said, not only naturally, but spiritually. Amen. That's good. Lord God, let my spiritual ears be in tune to your voice. Because yep. he says that my sheep know my, my voice and a stranger they will not follow. follow. So therefore, yeah. when that person cuts you off in Hallelujah. traffic yeah. or they're driving too slow, we shouldn't be so we shouldn't be so quick to be angry. Mm -hmm. Because the Lord says that in this world you're going to have tribulation, but to be of good cheer for he's overcome the world. Mm -hmm. And that tribulation comes in many different forms. Yes, it does. Amen. Amen. But we have to remember it says you must be quick to listen, slow to speak, and slow to get angry. And some of us have hair trigger yep. buttons that we're instantly angry. We can go from zero to 100 like it's nothing. <laughs> and if you're being God aware, uh -huh. you should not be so quick to be angry. Amen. You should not be so quick to be angry because the Holy Ghost is there to correct you, Amen. to reel you, reel you back in. To pull those reins back. So, whoa, Nelly, come on back in there. Uh -huh, uh -huh. Let's get this thing in check. Amen. Before you say or do something that you cannot right. bring back. Right. That you can't take it back. Once the word's released, you can't take them back. That's right. You can't put that toothpaste back in the tooth. <laughs> into the, wherever you squeeze it from. Uh -huh. If you squeeze too much, you can't put it back in there. That's right. right. <laughs> you got to use it. <laughs> And that's what God is saying. I'm trying to tell you how to maneuver through life. Amen. People are going to get on your nerves. Sure enough. People are going to demand stuff from you that they're not willing to give themselves. <laughs> but God is saying you still have to let your light yes, shine. That's yes. right. Amen. You still have to let your light shine. You still got to walk in love. Amen. You can't tell them the things that you want to tell them. And you can't be at the job flipping desk over. Right. <laughs> Because you want to know sometimes. Yes. 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 Like, one more thing. This is going to be on. And God is saying, no, you have to be, my children, you have to be slow to get angry. Because it says human anger uh -huh. does not produce the righteousness God desires. And I think the King James Version says the wrath of man worketh not the righteousness, the righteousness of God. Of God. Mm -hmm. So I'm not going to allow myself to get to that point Amen. that I just have no filter. Amen. I can't allow that. Because that's what the enemy wants us to do. That's how the enemy wants us to respond. Mm -hmm. To the stimulus that he places into the atmosphere. Mm -hmm. Are you God aware? Amen. Praise God. In your daily life, we come in here and we want to praise 
we want to worship God, and we just want to pour our love upon him. But what lifestyle have you been leading from Monday to Saturday? What have you been doing from Monday to Saturday, but yet you want to experience the manifest presence of God? You want fire to fall from heaven and just burn up everything. God, I want to see, I want that anointing that I see on Minister Zanika's life, but what did Minister Zanika have to go through to get that anointing? Right, exactly. Right. And am I willing to pay that price? Amen. 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 So human anger does not produce the righteousness God desires. So get rid of all the filth and evil in your lives. Uh -huh. And humbly accept the word God has planted in your heart, for it has the power Ooh. to save Amen. your soul. Amen. It has the power to save your soul. And our soul is our mind, our will, and our emotions. If we allow the Lord to have free reign and have his, let his word do the work that he's called it to do, is able to save Amen. your soul. Amen. You don't have to lose your mind. That's Thank, right. you, Lord. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Lord. Amen. Thank you, Lord. You don't have to stay up all night anxious and worried and can't sleep. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you. Know what the word of God says and apply it to your life. Amen. Speak the word in your house. Speak, Speak the, the word, word of your children. Hallelujah. Speak the word of your grandchildren. Yes. Speak the word in your work environment. Speak the word. It says the word has the power. The word God has planted in your hearts where it has the power to save your souls if you allow it to. Because mm. you have a choice. <coughs> you have a choice. I can either believe God and stand on his word. Amen. Or I can let all these stimulants occur in my life and I just lose my mind like I, I'm just gone crazy. Mm. Then I've been flipping over the edge. Mm. You have a choice. Amen. I cannot control what how people treat me. But what I can control is how I respond Amen. to the way that they treat Amen. me. Amen. And Jesus said that in this world you're going to have tribulation. He says you're accounted as sheep for the slaughter daily. Amen. Now does that mean we just take stuff? No, we do not. But we operate in the spirit of meekness. Amen. We operate in strength. Amen. Knowing who God <laughs> is. Amen. Amen. Wherefore, lay apart all filthiness and superfluity of naughtiness and receive with meekness the engrafted word which is able to save your souls. But be ye doers of the word and not hearers only, deceiving your own selves. Woo. It's not enough that you know what the word says if you're not doing it. You must be a doer of the word. Amen. That's what I mean, God has been telling us this week after week. You must be doers of the word. Yes, we can quote scripture, we can spout scripture off, but the minute it comes to our life and what we're going through, are we a doer? Are we a doer of the word? Amen? Amen. Verse 22 in the New Living Transla Translation says, but don't just listen to God's word, you must do what it says, wow. otherwise you're only fooling yourself. Oh, 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 wow. For if you listen to the word and don't obey, it is like glancing at your face in a mirror. You see yourself, walk away, and forget what you look like. Mm. But if you look carefully into the perfect law that sets you free, and if you do what it says and don't forget what you heard, then God will bless you for doing it. Wow. And then this one is a verse I love. It says, if you claim to be religious, but don't control your tongue, you are fooling yourself, and your religion is worthless. Mm. Because I can tell you all day long that I love the Lord and I love you, mm. but if I do not know how to control my tongue, my religion is worthless. It means nothing. Amen. Jesus modeled this life for us. But we act like we cannot shut up our mouths. Because we say it's the truth and the truth needs to be said and I'm going to say it now. When the Holy Ghost is saying, be quiet, this is not the time, this is not... Just be quiet. That's why the Lord says you've got to listen to his voice. You need to have that spirit of discernment. Be tuned into what God is saying. God is saying. What words did you release today that pierced someone and you don't even realize, you don't even realize it? Mm -hmm. What words did you release into the atmosphere today that has set some things in place? And then when you start reaping, you act like something strange happened to you. Mm -hmm. Right. When you say, oh, that thing makes me sick. Or that thing is killing me. Right. I mean, think about the words that we say. 
But the Lord says, if you can't control your tongue, your religion is worthless. Amen? Amen. So how do we stay aware of his presence? How do we stay aware of his presence? And before I ask you these questions, don't think that I'm trying to tell you to be super spiritual. But you need to ask yourself, and you know, it was that rage, what would Jesus do? And it was, I mean, that was a thing for a while, and then it kind of tapered off. Mm -hmm. But God is saying, how can we make ourselves aware of his presence? So you ask yourself, would you watch that movie if he was with you? Mm -hmm. Good question. Would you watch that movie if he was with you? And I know, I love movies, I do. But if this had all kinds of curse words in it, would God... Would you sit there comfortably if you were aware that God was with you? Because we say that. We say that scripture, that he never leaves us nor forsakes us. But when we're doing the activities and things that we like to do, we kind of like put that yeah. on the back burner. Like God is somewhere else right now. Yeah. Right now he's at Elder Phillips' house, and he's not <laughs> at my house looking at what I'm doing. <laughs> so he don't know what I'm partaking of right now, because he's at her house. Right. Amen? <laughs> But God is saying, I'm everywhere. Amen. 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 That he's omnipresent. He is everywhere. Amen. So would you watch that movie with, if you was with him? Would you, like, would you use that language in front of him? Mm -hmm. I mean, do you ever realize how many people that say that they love the Lord and that they're Christians and they curse? Right. 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 And they just let the words just come? Just come. Right. Just slap them out? But would you talk like that mm. if you were God away? No. Would you talk like that if you were God away? Mm -hmm. Would your attitude with others please or displease God? <laughs> when you go into the workplace. Right. Because that's where we spend most of our time. Yeah. Would your attitude please or displease God? And when you're on Facebook, uh -oh. Uh -oh. and you're sharing that post, would God be pleased with what that post says? Right. Even if it didn't originate from you, but because you're sharing it, would God be pleased with it? Because we want to, we want to be God aware all the time. We want to be God aware all the time. All the time. And you can't be God aware if you're not tuned in. Amen. You cannot be God aware if you're not tuned in. 